This brick building in central London isn't built in real brick, but you would never be able to tell. And here's a twist. Building this facade in real masonry brick wouldn't be even feasible, but not for the reasons you might think. It's not about the cost per square meter, not about labor shortages, and not even about carbon, although we will cover that too. In this video, we'll explore how modern brick facades are built, why traditional brick is disappearing, and why architects and engineers must pay close attention. My name is Eugene Korch, I am a practicing facade engineer, and I teach at the Institute for Architectural Science and Technology. And today, we are talking about modern brick veneer facades what they are, how they work, and why the design decisions behind them matter more than ever. Before we answer why this facade couldn't be built in masonry brick, we need to step back. Let's remind ourselves how brick facades actually work today. We are not talking about the old, thick, load-bearing brick walls from a century ago. Nobody builds those anymore. They are too slow, too heavy, and terrible thermally. Modern brick facades are what we call veneers, a single layer of bricks. They are either stacked directly from the foundation in low-rise buildings, or they rest on steel shelf angles at every second floor in taller ones. This single layer of bricks is then tied to the main structure with metal brick ties for lateral stability. And this structural arrangement of the masonry brick veneer facades is also their greatest weakness. Brickwork must always start at the ground or at the slab level because it's stacked. In other words, it has to be dead loaded from below. To keep it economical, the brick is usually supported every other floor. Sometimes you can even dead load three stories straight from the foundation. That's why masonry brick is so common in low rise residential buildings. Now, to form an opening, you can use lintel spanning between the reveals. That works fine when the windows are modest in size and stacked neatly one above another. But look at our building. The windows are huge and staggered. If we tried masonry brick here, we'd need shelf angles at every slab level, and the lintels alone still wouldn't solve the problem. The character of this building relies on brick reveals wrapping all sides of the windows, including the head reveals at the top. In traditional brickwork, that's only possible if you build an arch. The arch carries the load of the bricks above and transfers it down into the sides. But here, there are no arches, so the only way to form these openings is with structural lintels. That could be stainless steel or concrete. And to give the surface of the reveal a brick finish, you need a thin slips attached to the lintel. But here's the problem. Bonding slips to the steel or concrete with adhesives is a terrible idea. Adhesives have a design life of about 35 years to 30 years if you are lucky. That's fine for glazing units, which are designed to be replaced every 20 years. But brick facades can't work that way, you don't replace them every generation. That's why brick slips must always be mechanically fixed, not bonded. Talking about bonds, the arrangement of bricks, the bond, isn't just about looks. It can be structural or purely decorative. Structural bonds like Flemish or stretcher interlock the bricks. They tie together and can be retained back to the wall with brick ties spaced about 600 mm apart, matching typical stud spacing. Non-structural bonds like stack bonds, basket weave or herring bone don't interlock the same way. They need extra bracing, with brick ties at much closer centers, which means more studs behind the wall. And then we have our building. Here the bond is, well, unusual. Bricks project and recess, partly connected, partly not. That makes its behavior difficult to predict, especially when the concrete slabs behind it deflect on the life load and building sway. And this brings us to the next issue, movement joints. The bricks are connected one to another through the mortar joints. Both brick and mortar are porous, they absorb water, and they expand and contract with changes in temperature and moisture. To accommodate this movement, the bond must be broken by continuous vertical movement joints. According to British standards, these joints should be positioned every 10 to 12 meters, and no further than 5 to 6 meters from a corner. But in our buildings, design relies on not having any continuous vertical joints on the facade. Building this in masonry bricks simply isn't feasible without stepping outside normative guidance. There must be another way to build this facade. So, let's look at the alternatives. The modern alternative to masonry brick veneers is rain screen brick slip facade. Most systems follow the same principle. You start with a stud wall, then sheathing board, a water barrier and insulation. Over that goes a grid of aluminium or stainless steel brackets which carry vertical aluminium rails. But instead of fixing decorative boards or metal panels, these rails support another layer of horizontal profiles, and those hold thin brick slips. The slips themselves can be either extruded terracotta or thin clay bricks with grooves on the edges so they can be mechanically locked in place. Unlike traditional brickwork, the joint between slips are filled with a flexible mortar. 
And here's the key difference. The slips aren't stacked. They are suspended off aluminium rails, which means all the structural problems we saw with masonry brick can now be solved. With brick slips, staggered windows are no longer a problem. Because the slips are suspended and not stacked, there is no need to deadload the facade at the slab level. You can hang the slips from any point vertically. That means that the architect is free to use virtually any window arrangement, stacked or staggered. Because the brick slips are suspended, the head reveal is also no longer an issue. We can treat it exactly the same way as the vertical wall, simply continue the slips around the opening. The same applies to soffits at entrances or even internal lobbies. All of this is technically possible with slips and at the quality level that would be nearly impossible with traditional masonry brick. But unlike masonry, the reveals come at extra cost. In real brickwork, reveals come for free as part of the brick return. With brick slips, every additional surface means more subframe, more fixings, and more labor. In red screen brick slip systems, the brick bond is purely visual. Because the slips aren't stacked and they don't rely on one another structurally, the pattern carries no load at all. That means that we can use stretcher bond, stack bond, Flemish bond, or even irregular patterns with recesses and protruding bricks like on this building. The only limitation comes from the rail geometry. Patterns like basket weave or herringbone aren't practical here, but most conventional bonds are perfectly achievable. In brick slips, not only we avoid relying on the brick bond for structural performance, we also don't rely on the mortar to transfer any loads. The mortar in brick slips system is flexible. The slips sit within apertures in the horizontal rails, and that flexibility allows them to move with the rails and with the building. So unlike masonry brick facades, we do not need to provide movement joints for thermal and moisture expansion. That makes it possible to have the surface completely continuous without movement joints. Clay brick carries a relatively high embodied carbon, so the less of it you use, the better the performance. With brick slip facades, far less clay is required, and although aluminium has a high carbon intensity per kilogram, the actual amount of aluminium in the subframe is very small compared to the mass of the full brickwork. The result is much lighter system overall, with reduced transport impact and lower embodied carbon. In cradle-to-gate comparison, rain screen brick slips often outperform full masonry veneers, sometimes by more than a half. But you may be surprised to learn that despite all the advantages of the rain screen brick slips, this building wasn't built that way. The location of the project is critical. The building is right in the middle of London, surrounded by very narrow streets. Building this facade in situ would have been a nightmare. Both masonry brick and brick slips require external access for installation, either scaffolding or mass climber. And with brickwork, scaffolding is really the only option. But here, there is no space, no room for scaffold, and no space for storing materials on site. And that meant that the facade had to be fully prefabricated and installed without the need for permanent external access during construction. There is another way to achieve a brick facade without relying on external access during installation. That is, brick cast concrete panels with brick slips cast directly into the surface. Here's how it works. The brick slips either have a dovetail groove at the back or a small metal pin fixed into them. They are laid out face down inside the mold, then the concrete is poured over the back to lock them permanently in place. The finished precast beams and columns are transported to site, craned straight off the lorry and hung from the primary frame. No scaffolding, no mass climbers, no storage of materials on the street. It's quick, precise, and entirely prefabricated. With precast concrete, the windows can be installed from the inside of the building directly into the precast apertures. No external access required. However, in this particular building, it's likely that the curtain wall frames were fixed from the inside and then glazed from motorized platforms outside. But unlike masonry brick, there is no restriction on window arrangement. Because the precast units are suspended off the frame, they don't need to be dead loaded at the bottom. So whether the windows are stacked, staggered, or oversized, the system can accommodate them without difficulty. Another clear advantage of precast concrete over rain screen brick slips is flexibility at the head reveal. Brick slips can be cast directly into three sides of a precast beam or column. That means not only is the head reveal is not an issue, but even the top of the parapet can be finished in brick. This is especially useful for corner columns, where precast allows extremely precise detailing that would be very difficult to achieve with other systems.
Precast concrete facades are by far the most flexible when it comes to brick patterns. Unlike masonry veneers, they don't rely on the bond for structural strength. And unlike rain screen brick slips, the pattern isn't restricted by vertical or horizontal rails. There is no need for mortar, unless you want it for decorative effect. And that means that almost any pattern is possible. Stretch a bond, stack bond, even herring bone, and at virtually no extra cost. But until recently, precast concrete had one major limitation. Precast concrete facades are notorious for their joints. British standards require panel joints to be no less than 12 mm for two-stage silicon, and larger panels demand even wider fabrication tolerances. In practice, that often means joints of 25 mm, more than twice the width of a normal brick joint. And the biggest challenge is the continuity of the brick bond across those joints. So how is it solved here? At our building, the precast elements are arranged so vertical joints only appear in thin horizontal bands at slab level. The bricks that would span across those joints are simply left out during casting. Because the panels are relatively small, the manufacturer could achieve a tighter tolerances targeting 10 to 12 mm joints instead of 25. Metal clips are pre-installed where these missing bricks should be. Once the panels are installed, a two-stage silicon seal is applied and the missing slips are installed into the clips just like in a rain screen system. Finally, the joints could be filled with silicon and are dusted with crushed mortar so they blend seamlessly. And the result is one of the first precast concrete facade with joints that are literally invisible. There isn't a single continuous vertical joint around the entire perimeter. And that makes this project truly groundbreaking. Having said that, precast concrete is probably the least efficient way of building brick facades when it comes to embodied carbon. Yes, it uses less brick, just like rain screen system, but instead of a small amount of aluminium, precast requires heavy stainless steel brackets, reinforced steel, and a lot of concrete, all of which makes it the least carbon efficient option. The big advantage is not carbon, it's access, logistics, and speed, and money. Precast panels can be craned directly into place with no scaffolding and no site storage. That alone can outweigh the higher material impact. Some might argue there are carbon savings in transport and reduced labor on site, but in most cases those will never fully offset the embodied carbon of precast materials. But it doesn't stop here. Other critical aspects to consider in both precast and brick slip facades. From fire safety in ventilated cavities of brick slips to fire stops and precast concrete. From how these systems handle primary frame movement to the very different approaches they take to moisture management and building physics. We also need to consider safety. For example, climbing hazards on facades finished with deep brick reveals. If you're an architect, structural engineer, or building scientist, these are the things that you must understand. At Facade Intelligence, we go deeper into these topics in our webinar on this case study. Join me live or watch the recording. As always, all the drawings and diagrams from this video are available there, so make sure you become a member. And if you found this useful, make sure to watch this video next. And I will see you next Saturday, the same time.